Welcome to the second part of our lectures on robotics. In this session, we will discuss motors and motor drivers. Now, let us uh, revise our overview of our mobile robot. It has got various system, locomotion, power supply, actuators, sensory devices, sensory data processing and the control system. We have discussed the locomotion system and the power supply system in the first session. In this, we will discuss the actuators, that is the motors we, which we will be using to achieve our motion, locomotion or to do some other work. Now, what are the end actuators? They are the devices which are used to convert the electrical energy into meaningful mechanical work. The work output could be rotational, straight line motion and for rotational motion we use motors and for linear motion that is straight line motion we use electromagnets. As you can see most of this are electromechanical devices because the most common form of power supply for a mobile robot is an electrical source that is a battery or some power supply source. Now, what are the various kinds of motors that are available to us? AC motors, these are not used much in robotics. They find their application in uh, household appliances, but not in robotics. Then stepper motors, stepper motors are used for controlled rotation. That is, if you want to move the motor only a measured amount of turn, then we use a stepper motor and this is used for high accuracy autonomous robots. Then DC motors, these are general purpose motors, they find extensive usage in the robotics. Then there is an improvement of the DC motors that is the servo motor, which has got inbuilt feedback and error compensation. These are more accurate better than the DC motors, but retain almost all the uh, characteristics of the DC motor. Let us now uh, start with the discussion of the stepper motors. As you can see is a cut out view of stepper motors from various angles. This uh, kind of motor is used for measured rotation that is in it moves in steps a uh, definite amount of rotation in each step that is hence the name stepper motors. And these are ideal for autonomous robots which require very high preci precision and rotation. Now, let us explain the working of this motor. As you can see there are four set of coils in a stepper motor and in the diagrams the coil with red color is the active coil and rest are inactive at any given point of time. We can see this that each time only one of the coils is switched on and in the altering fashion in the next step an adjacent coil is switched on and the previous coil is switched off. So, as so that the shaft rotates from the previous on state coil to the next coil and hence continue its rotation by changing by varying the sequence of the excitation. And this particular kind of arrangement is known as the single coil excitation stepping and this only one coil is active at any given instant of time. And a better uh, picture can be drawn from this, this shows how it is working. Each time one of the coils is activated, the magnet, permanent magnet of the shaft get, gets attracted to that and when the next coil is switched on, it rotates to that position and hence continues moving as we continue to regenerate and repeat the single coil excitation sequence. Next what we have, 
is a variant of the mode. This is known as the double coil excitation. In this, at any given point of time, two coils are switched active and two are inactive. As you can see that the resultant of the forces from the coil 4 and coil 3 are making this shaft point towards the direction in between 4 and 3 and in the next sequence we keep 3 on and shift the on state of 4 to 2 and the coil uh, the shaft takes a turn to take up a position midway between coil 2 and 3 and hence proceeding in this manner we can achieve continuous rotation by this kind of sequence that is uh, first 1100 and then keeping one of these digits and reversing the alternate digits. Then again we keep this and reverse this alternate and in this way we generate a sequence from any digital logic circuit and make this motor move in particular steps. This diagram explains this in a better way that alternately the coil opposite to each uh, that is switched on and off and it continues its motion. Now, what are the differences between these two modes of excitation? First one is a single coil mode in which only one coil is energized at any given point of time. In the other one double coil mode, two coils are energized hence it consumes double the power of the single coil mode. In the single coil mode very less torque is generated because the shaft is held in its position only by one coil oh. and in the double coil mode more torque is generated because the shaft is held in its position by two coils. So, we get almost the double torque in this case. In the single coil mode the settling time is more thus that whenever a step is executed there is a tendency of the shaft to overshoot it. So, there is certain settling time involved and in the case of single coil mode the settling time is more. So, this may overshoot and may even miss a step, but in the case of double coil mode settling time is less that is very there is very less overshoot and this is more desirable, but there is as I have already said one disadvantage to the double coil excitation mode that is there is double power consumption. So, if you want to economize on power consumption we use this otherwise we use choose the double coil mode. Here you can see that this is a hybrid stepping that is interleaved stepping which uses alternate states of the single coil and double coil excitation mode and this enables us to take steps that are actually half than spe that specified by the stepper specifications. So, as you can see that this is the st first state of the single coil, then first state of the double coil, second state of the single coil, second state of the double coil and this way we have 8 possible states thus we can take minute st uh, uh, rotations half step rotation by using this mode. Now, we have a very simple arrangement of uh, uh, the driver of a uh, stepper motor is by using very commonly uh, available Darlington array that is ULN 2003 and thus the sequence data sequence that is coil 0, 1, 2, 3 are sent by the PC or any controller we have you, which from which we are controlling the motor and this signal is transmitted onto the uh, motor enabling us to make it rotate in a controlled fashion. Then there are certain problems with stepper motors that need to be discussed that is there is a very low torque to weight ratio that is to achieve a certain value of torque the weight of the motor becomes very high and this may be undesirable in certain situations where 
the weight of the robot may increase beyond some certain limit. There is another disadvantage that if we increase the stepping frequency that is we try to increase the speed of rotation of the stepper motor then we get a gradual decrease in the torque generated by it and this this may end up in step skipping if the frequency of stepping is high enough it may overshoot certain steps and that kind of error is very difficult to detect and may get un remain unnoticed and further we can end up in odometric errors now we'll move on to the discussion of dc motors which are very commonly used though they are they do not have any system for control uh, measured rotation but we can compensate their rotation by using appropriate feedback control systems speed control systems to achieve the desired output uh, dc motors as the name suggests uses direct current that is the direction of current does not vary with time and it is possible for the motor to run in both direction as well as the speed of rotation is controllable. Now, this is a simple diagram for demonstrating the working of the DC motor. The direction of rotation of the motor can be altered by reversing the direction of current that flows through the motor and speed of rotation is controlled by controlling the average power that flows into the DC motor. There are certain terms associated with DC motors, operating voltage that is recommended voltage for powering the motor, operating current that is the current it is drawing while in use. There is a certain load on the motor shaft and the current whatever it is drawing from the power supply is known as the operating current. Then there is a term known as stall current that is when we apply power to the motor we keep it from rotating we by using some mechanical stop we bar it from rotating but we get that the current consumed by the motor increases to a very high value and that is known as a stall current that is the maximum drawn current drawn when the mo motor is not allowed to rotate but still is being powered and stall torque is the force or the torque needed to hold the motor in stall condition. These four parameters define the usage and uh, further desi uh, design of a system using DC motors. Now, some characteristics of the DC motor that free running torque that is if there is no load on the motor then the motor does not consume any electrical power. This is the ideal case, but in the real life there it is not so because there would be some friction on the shaft and to overcome that the motor would be consuming a certain amount of power. Now, as we increase the load on the shaft the power consumption of the motor increases and that is a result of it being a drawing more current from the power supply and the power supplied by the motor is the product of its output shafts uh, rotational velocity that is omega and the torque provided by it and some other characteristics. These are very high speed devices, they rotate at very high speeds, but generate a very low torque. So, what we do is by using gears or pulley systems, we trade off the high speed to get an increment in the torque. Now, this is the working uh, plot of a DC motor that is at 0 speed at maximum load that is when we load it to the uh, loaded by a stall torque then it does not rotate that is it goes into 0 speed and when there is free running that is there is no load on the shaft then it rotates with its maximum speed as you can see that this is the speed and this is the power consumed and this line this is known as the load line. 
So, as we increase the load, uh, increase the load, decrease the load, the or speed increases. And this plot, this is a parabolic plot. This shows the power consumed by the motor, ideally in the stall position as well as in the no load position, it should not consume any power, though current is drawn, but it should not con uh, consume any power, because either in 0 speed state, the current drawn is 0 and in uh, the stall state, the back EMF equals the power supply. So, the operational voltage is 0, but as this is a real live device, it consumes certain power and what you can see that highest power is consumed at half speed and half load. That we get a power peak that is the maximum power that can be drawn by the motor during its operation. Now, a discussion about DC motor drivers, that is circuits that are used to control DC motors, control the speed as well as the direction of the DC motor. These are current amplifying circuits, that is the controller circuitry, the microcontroller or the computer that is trying to control the robot may not be able to provide that much amount of current required for the motor to operate. So, we use a current amplifier to reciprocate that signal to the motor in the form of higher current. Now, a low current control signal is converted to a proportionally higher control. Proportionality is to be maintained so as to uh, have accurate control or desired control over the motor. Now, the most suitable devices for this are power transistors, which usually have output uh, currents of in the order of amperes and input current in the order of milliamperes. So, the, our driving circuitry, the control circuitry drives this power transistor and does not have to provide much power and the motor are driven at higher current ratings by the power transistor. Now, for direction control, we have a very unique, very special arrangement of transistors. These four are transistor switches. By the combination of the on and off states of these transistor switches, we can attain various um, directions of current flow in this motor and hence make it move in our desired direction. Here is a truth table of that system. If S 1 is on and S 4 is on, so what do we get? S 1 is on and S 4 is on. So, the current flows from this, this direction, we see that current flow flows from 1 to 2, that is 1 to 2. In the next state, if S 2 is on and S 3 is on, that is S 2 is on and S 3 is on. So, the direction of flow of current is in this direction, that is from 2 to 1. So, what we have is the direction of current within the motor gets reversed by selecting any one of the states of the edge bridge. And what is this braking condition? That is S 1 and S 2 is on. That means, this is on and this is on. By this, what happens is that the potential across the two terminals of the motor are forcibly made equal and by this, immediately the energy contained within the coil of the, the magnetic energy as the coils are inductive. So, that energy is short circuited and dissipated immediately as heat and the motor stops at its own place. And if all of these states are made 0, all of the switches are open, then the two terminals 1 and 2, they float, that is they going to, uh, they can assume any potential in this, that is free running, that is it can, if the robot is on an incline, then it will slide down the incline. It will not have any hindrance in rotation. Okay. Now, how the edge bridge is implemented? Edge bridge, a simplified view of the edge bridge can be um, assumed from this diagram uh, that is consisting of four transistors and 
each of this transistor having opposite states during the operation. As you can see in the next diagram, various combinations of L and R, these two bits ensure different uh, direction of rotation of the motor. That is, in the first case, this is a braking condition. In the second case, it rotates in this uh, this direction 1 to 2 and the third case it rotates in this direction and the fourth case is also another braking state where both are made ground and equated in their potential. Now, how do we control the speed of a DC motor? This is our control circuit that is our speed control circuit. Now, we give this power supply to this circuit, we connect the motors to the other side and this is our control signal that is the signal that will tell the control circuit at what speed we should turn this DC motor. Input to the control circuit is the control signal that is a signal of very low current and amplitude and the output is a high power current by the voltage control circuit. Now, the output is proportional to the control signal. The power that is consumed by the motor is provided by the power supply, but the amount the amplitude of the signal at the DC motor output is controlled by the control signal as we will see in next. But we, we can control the speed of the DC motor by passing the by controlling through a variable resistor but it is not advisable as the resistor will dissipate a large amount of energy as heat and would become extremely energy inefficient. What is done is that power supply to the motor is sent in short intermittent bursts. So, as that the average power provided to the motor decreases, but there is very less dissipation in the circuit in compared to the case where variable resistors are used for DC motor speed control. Some very elementary uh, concept of duty cycle that is if the output voltage remains at a certain level for a continuous duration of time, then we say it is at 100 percent duty cycle. If it remains on for only 80 percent of the time and remains off for 20 percent of the time, we say it is 80 percent duty cycle and similarly other ways and could be any uh, value in between these, any value it could assume. So, how do we define duty cycle? That is, it is the percentage of time of the time period. Time period is that the signal is repeating as you can see this sequence is repeating, this is repeating. So, the time period that is the duration of the repetition of the signal is given by T and the percentage of the time it remains on is known as the duty cycle. So, what happens is that the average power that is provided to the motor is the percentage of time the uh, switch remains on. That is, if it is 80 percent duty cycle then the average line comes out to somewhere here. So, only 80 percent of the total power is provided to the motor and hence the motor runs at 80 percent of its desired or uh, specified speed. Now, how to vary the duty cycle by a control circuit? Pulse width modulation is a technique which with which we modify the duty cycle of a waveform depending upon an input control voltage and this is one of the uh, basic technique elementary techniques of a DC motor speed control circuit. Now, it can be very easily implemented using the hobby IC that is 555 that is a timer IC or in case of computer controlled um, devices or controlling using microcontrollers, we could write some form of code so as to generate desired waveform pattern. Now, how we combine the speed and direction control that is our PWM generator is our speed controller and our edge bridge is 
or direction controller. So, this is the circuit in which we combine these two and the, the uh, speed and direction control into a single combined circuit. Okay. Now, a uh, common example of direction control that is the L 293 D chip that is a quad half bridge and each of these uh, half bridges are bipolar that is they can the output can assume any of the states and it can either drain or source current sink current uh, sink and source current. So, by combining two such half bridges we can achieve we can get a full bridge and hence properly control the direction of the uh, direction of rotation of the DC motor and there are two pairs. So, this is an ideal uh, device for controlling two motors as used in many uh, most of the locomotion systems such as differential and other systems. Okay. This is the layout of a connection diagram of the L 293 D chip. This is commonly available and this is the connection diagram of the 555 timer IC which is used to generate the PWM signal. This is the configuration of the 555 timer IC to generate PWM signals of desired duty cycle. What we have here is at pin 5 that is the modulation input we provide the control signal which tells that how much of duty cycle we are expecting from the output this is that is pin number 3 and trigger is used used to generate each pulse at a at regular interval of time. So, the waveform repeats itself ok. That is all uh, to the DC motor control. In part 3 that is control system and sensors, we will discuss various analog sensors and also discuss feedback control that is how to correct if some kind of error happens. Proportional control is one of the cases of feedback control that will be discussed in depth and we will also take up an example of how to build a line follower robot that is a robot that is able to follow a line drawn on some uniform surface. Thank you.